One of the more surprising findings in the last five years was that the location of the primary tumor really plays a role in tumor biology and how we should treat patients, in particular with regard to the egf septa antibody therapy. So when we talk about left and right-sidedness, uh, the definition is actually not perfect. You know, the Europeans look at a, a cut point at the spinning flexure. In the American guidelines, we take the transverse colon out and don't talk about it more or less. But uh, anything about uh, descending colon, sigmoid, rectal cancer is considered uh, left-sided for sure. And I would believe, uh, as a German, I trust the European definition, and I use the cut of the splenic flexure to, to distinguish between right and left-sided tumors. Now, we've known that right-sided tumors are more aggressive per, from the very get-go. There's a prognostic implication we've known for quite some time that right-sided tumors have, a, when these tumors metastasize, have a shorter, uh, patients have a shorter survival based on studies in early 2000 by about five months difference, which is quite significant. On the other hand, once we use, uh, you know, trials and we look at sidedness and we look at the response of EGF septa antibodies compared to bevacizumab, like the 84-5 study, or the FIRE 3 study, we showed that right sided tumors do not benefit from EGF septa antibody therapy, whether it's with cetuximab or panitumab up front, whereas bevacizumab is kind of sidedness agnostic. So we can use bevacizumab in right sided tumors. That is quite interesting because there might even be a detrimental effect that is suggested when we use cetuximab in right sided tumors. And that's why NCCN guidelines do not allow us or do not recommend using. Uh, cetuximab or panetumab in right-sided tumors.